Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? I'm getting kind of a late start. It is currently 7.43 p.m. And my shirt is very dirty. <laughs> I've been running around doing all kinds of stuff today. I made a kind of a rant video that got kind of emotional at the end. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second. But um, I did a rant video and then I did a video on my Peter Does Stuff channel. I wanted to film videos <clears throat> on um, all of my channels today to kind of like in July on a positive note that like I filmed videos on all of my channels. But um, I had such a hard time falling asleep last night. I'm like really, really struggling. And um, I'm going to have to talk to my neurologist about it because it's just, it's getting to the point where like I'm getting very, very little sleep and it's taking me, there was a period where I was like falling asleep faster. There was a couple days, but then it's kind of like back to where it was before, no matter what I do. I didn't take a nap last night. Um, and you know, like we got home from dinner from our neighbor's house and um, I hung out with Alex and Boo for a little bit and then Alex went to bed and I started watching my shows. And I didn't even go to bed that late. And then um, I just tossed and turned and tossed and turned and tossed and turned. And I mean, honest to God, the last time that I looked at the clock, I don't know why I specifically remember that it was exactly this time, but it was 8.33 in the morning. And I was like, I'm going to be so exhausted tomorrow. And um, I, I must have drifted off to sleep somewhere after that. But I literally, I mean, it was like hours on end that I tossed and turned. And... Um, the thing is, is that, like, I feel so much better on the Keppra, but I know that 100% it has to be from the Keppra because I've seen so many people talk about insomnia related to Keppra. And a lot of people, like, get off the Keppra and they get put on something else. Um, you know, there are a lot of other anti-seizure medications, but I like how I feel on the Keppra. Um, and so I don't want to come off of it. And, um, you know... There's other, you know, things like the weight loss, I think, is related somewhat to the Keppra. And I don't know. I just feel better. I feel uh, more clear-headed on the Keppra than I have in the past. And um, and so I don't want to change and get off of it. But, like, I can't continue to not sleep like this. So I need to talk to my neurologist about it and see what he recommends. Because I, ha I can't believe that I'm the only person that's on Keppra in his office that has had this complaint. So maybe he has some suggestions for me because, I mean, I've literally tried everything at this point, you know, and it's like, I'll get like two days where I fall asleep a little bit faster. And I didn't drink like a lot of caffeine or anything last night. So there's no reason why I, I shouldn't have fallen asleep. Like I didn't take a nap. I was tired. Like when I was, when I went to bed, I was like tired. Like I could have fallen asleep that quick. And, um, so I don't know. I, I have no idea what's going on. So I won't go on and on and on and on about that today. But, um, so yeah, so I woke up late today, like real late. And, um, my neighbor's friend, um, the one that goes to the pool with her, she came to go to the pool today and so uh, texted me and was like, hey, it's like a good, beautiful day, come to the pool. And I thought, well, maybe I just won't make any videos today and I'll just go to the pool and just relax. Um, but I was like, no, I want to end July making some videos. So, um, who was texting me? So I was like, I'm going to, um, I'm going to, um, <laughs> make some, uh, I'm going to make some videos and all that kind of stuff. So I was doing some stuff around the house and then I made this video for my Peter Mon channel, which is kind of a rant, but I also talk about some serious stuff at the end of it. And the video was 56 minutes long. It's like super long. So it took me an hour and then I had to like render it and then I had to start uploading it. And then Alex texted me and said he was coming home and I had just prepared this whole video that I was going to do for my Peter Does Stuff channel of like all of my favorite bathroom products right now. And so um, I had that all laid out on the floor and I was like, how long do I have? And he's like, I'll be home in 30 minutes. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to finish this. So I got that done. Then I was uploading that and he had just gotten home. And so he's relaxing upstairs watching like po clips from the TV show Pose on TikTok. I can hear him upstairs because I just hear Electra from Pose because <laughs> he keeps on watching all the clips with Electra in it. Um, who's one of the most fantastic characters ever in a TV show. But anyway... I said, are you watching post clips? I shouted up at him. He's like, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to probably watch some Real Housewives tonight. This vlog probably won't be really long. I wanted to do a longer vlog tonight to end July, but because I'm getting started kind of late, it probably won't be a super long vlog. 
<clears throat> and I know that I didn't vlog last night. That wasn't my plan. My plan was actually to vlog before we went to dinner. Um, but I wanted to, you know, like do my hair and look nice for dinner and things like that. And so, um, like I started getting ready at like, we had to be there at six. So I started getting ready at like five and, um, I hadn't started vlogging yet. It was like four 30 and I was like, if I start vlogging now, it's going to be like a 20 minute vlog. And so I was like, okay, well, I'll, I told Alex, I said, I'm just going to, I didn't start vlogging. I said, I'm going to vlog when we come home. If that's okay. He's like, that's fine. And so we ended up staying over there till like 1030. I didn't think we would stay over there that late. And I think it was like probably like 830 or nine. And I was like, we're not going home anytime soon. So, um, I put out on the Vlogarinos group and the community tab that I was going to skip vlogging last night, which I mean, had never been my plan, but, um, we were having such a good time. So anyway, yeah. So we went to dinner last night at our neighbor's house. Our neighbors on the corner came, um, she and her husband came and then we went to their house next door and it was so nice. It was so fun. And, um, yeah, it was just like the six of us and we had such a good time and she made chicken enchiladas and then she made vegetarian enchiladas with peppers and they were so good. And she made like the same amount of each and like this like, you know, glass, like what do you call it thing. And um, honestly, like <laughs> more people ate the vegetarian enchiladas because they were so delicious. And then um, she also had like she made like uh, rice and then she also made like this, like it was like corn and like salsa and all kinds of stuff and like all mixed together. And it was kind of like this, like corn, like this uh, corn and salsa, like salad kind of that you dipped like chips into. So she had like tortilla chips. It was really, really good. Alex thought it was great too. And so, um, it was really fun. It was really sweet. And, um, she like had lemonade for me and then she like made margaritas for all of them and she had, like a margarita machine and all this kind of stuff. It was just really fun. We had a really good time. We sat around and talked forever and talked about all kinds of stuff. And, um, she was like a, a school administrator, um, that wor worked with students that had, um, that had, um, I'm trying to give the the appropriate word because I um but like had like developmental issues and things like that and then my neighbor across the street they're both retired and so um, my neighbor across and they moved here from another city another state actually but um to be closer to uh, one of their kids and the grandkids and my neighbor across the street she was a school teacher for a very very long time so like we talked a lot about like them working in the school systems and things like that and. Just talked about all kinds of stuff. They were asking Alex a lot because they, you know, like they know me because I like I interact with them a lot. They know Alex, like you know, they'll be like, "Hey, Alex, how are you?" and blah blah stuff like that. But like, they don't like talk as much to him because like I'm at the pool with them and things like that, or out here during the day when they're here. So they were asking Alex a lot and getting to know him and asking about his family and stuff like that. We had a really good time. It was really fun. And so um, we came back over here, and I was actually like really tired, but I wanted to watch the last episode of Last Call because it came out last night and so I was gonna go to bed just like right when we got home because I was real tired and I thought no like I want to watch Last Call so I watched Last Call and then which was fantastic documentary series on um, Max and um, HBO Max 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 it was like a really good documentary series it talks a lot about the history and the stigma, it, like the last episode talks about like the gay panic defense. And I did, I was not aware that, so the gay panic defense is when, um, like when somebody kills, I, apparently it's like really big. And I knew this, but I didn't know that it was still used in a lot of states. Apparently there are still 38 states where the gay panic defense is still allowed to be used in a courtroom or in a trial. Um, but like in murdering trans, uh, people, especially trans people of color, like it's a huge like defense against like, oh, they hit on me and I didn't know what else to do. So I had to defend myself because they were part of the LGBT community. So that was, that's my defense is that I was defending myself against unwanted, you know, whatever, which is a really disgusting defense that they use. And a lot of people have gotten out of it. And in fact, the murderer, he had gotten out of it years before, like in 1973. And if he had been like arrested, like it, he was arrested, but if he had been charged appropriately, like all these other men wouldn't have been murdered. And um, 
So they talked about that. They talked about the history of like gay men being stigmatized and um, how it had really affected the court, like court trials of people that were like if they were defending gay men and lesbians in like a court trial, that it was harder to defend gay men and lesbians because people would immediately go to like uh, this whole kind of attitude of well you deserved it or you were asking for it and things like that, which is really sad. And in all honesty, like they kind of shined a light on the fact that it still exist today and I like I mean I'm pretty up to date when it comes to LGBT like news and things like that but I did not realize that I, I, probably because of the world that I live in like I, you know the people around me are you know, uh, you know I would say I mean I just, none of the people that I, I am around think that way so I think for me, like, I don't even, like, unless I hear a story like that, like, I don't necessarily think in that way, but I was kind of surprised to see that that's still kind of the attitude with some of the juries and things like that today. Let me move this camera a little bit. So I was kind of surprised by that, in all honesty, but the documentary was fantastically done. And, um, so I watched that last night, and then I watched, um... I started the night before watching the Slender Man documentary um, <clears throat> that was on um, that was on Max, HBO Max, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so I finished it last night. It was actually a, like a really good documentary. It was very interesting. There were just a lot of discrepancies in it, and I was interested. Like it was interesting to me why they di why they told certain parts of the story, and not, I don't know. It was just like the way that they portrayed it was interesting to me um but it was an interesting documentary and I didn't really know much about that case so I watched that last night um and then I watched something else I can't remember what else I watched needless to say I did not finish the book for Peter's book club <laughs> by the end of July which was my plan which was to finish uh Low Country Boil unless I finish it tonight and I just like power through it which I have like a couple hours left to finish. So I don't know that that'll happen. My eyes are really tired right now. Um, I think like not getting a lot of sleep is like really weighing heavy on me. So, um, yeah. So I don't know. I might go to bed early tonight. Um, talk to Caroline about Wednesday. She's actually going to pick me up earlier than she was going to. And we're going to run a bunch of errands and then bring stuff back to the house. And then she's going to help me return this stuff to, like, mail it and return it. And then there's some other errands that I need to run. Then she's going to um, bring, bring the stuff back to the house. And then she's going to take me to my hair appointment because she has a massage appointment at 4 o'clock, which she was going to cancel if we were going to go to the pool. But since I have my hair appointment, she's going to take me to my hair appointment, and then I'm just going to Uber home. And she's going to go to her massage, which she's, like, totally fine with. She's like, no, she's like, that way I don't have to cancel my massage, so... She's real excited about that. So that's Wednesday. And then tomorrow I don't have really a whole lot planned. Um, I feel like I busted out so many videos in July that in all honesty, tomorrow I might just kind of low-key it. I don't know. It'll just depend on when I wake up and how I feel when I wake up. Depend I mean, I, I, I'm sure I'll make my vlog, but... Um, it'll just kind of depend on how I feel when I get up tomorrow. Like, if I want to film a bunch of videos and whatever. I mean, I have videos to make on all my channels already kind of planned out. We'll just kind of see how I feel about it. But um, sometimes like the first day of the new month, I kind of like play it, you know, low key and don't really um, do a whole lot. So we'll see. But anyway, um, I feel like I've been super productive in July. And then um, that's Wednesday. And then Thursday I have um, therapy, and then Friday I have an appointment, and then Saturday Alex and I, I was completely unaware of this, but he told me that we have, like, this, in a, like, not an event, but, like, an opening of something that, um, that we're going to, and he had asked me, like, a long time if I would go to it with him, and I said yes, and so he was like, do you remember that? I was like, oh, okay, well, we'll go to that. So that's on Saturday. He is having... Do you guys hear the sound? Oh, I love that. That one bird that ooh, ooh, ooh. reminds me of fall. Um, which I actually have because I talked about this and read part of it in my 
video, my rant video today, To Kill a Mockingbird. That sound, that sound always reminds me of To Kill a Mockingbird. I don't know why. But anyway, I was going to reference this book. I've been thinking a lot about my mom lately. She must be around me or something. I always think that whenever my mom's, whenever I think about my mom, like I always think that she's around me, you know? But anyway, tomorrow night he has something that he might be doing at his friend's house. Like, do you hear that? Is that now? What is that? I don't know. I love that bird though. But, um, they, he and all of his friends do those IV things, you know, those like hydration IVs and stuff. And so they were going to do it like at their house. Like she knows somebody that does it. And so she was going to do like an IV party or something like that with just a couple of people. So he might do that tomorrow night or they're, it's either at her house or they're going to the IV place or I didn't really understand it. But anyway, that's tomorrow night. And then he has one other thing he has to do this week, but I think it's on, I think it's Friday night. Um, and then Saturday we're going to this opening of this thing and then that's that. So that's what we have going on this whole week. So kind of a low key kind of week. I mean, I feel like I have a lot of stuff going on. Um, but none of it, like, too serious or anything like that. I mean, you know, hair appointment, therapy, <laughs> stuff like that. I mean, it's whatever, you know? Um, what was I going to say? I was just going to say something, and now I totally forgot about what I was going to say. So, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I don't think it's supposed to be super nice. I don't think it's, like, a pool day tomorrow. Um, let me look and see. It was nice today. My neighbor next door, she went to the pool twice. She went with uh, her mom and some people, and then she went back up there with a friend later. It's currently 77 outside, and it says it's sunny. It was a nice day today. It, was, it like, got up to like 82 or 83. I mean, it, wasn't, it wouldn't have been a bad day at the pool. She actually said, she was like, the pool is really warm. And I said, okay. And I would kind of thought about going up there, and then I was like, I don't know. So anyway, oh no, tomorrow it's supposed to be 84, genuinely sunny despite a few afternoon clouds. I might go to the pool tomorrow. We'll see. So, yeah, maybe. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do to eat tonight. I have some stuff in the freezer. I was thinking about, like, I haven't, I have this stuff and I haven't eaten it. So, oh, last night while I was watching, I think it was while I was watching Slender Man. I warmed up my apple pie that my neighbor got me across the street. I warmed it up in the microwave. I think for like 45 seconds or a minute or 30 seconds. I can't remember. I think it was longer than 30 seconds. but And then I scooped out some ice cream on it and I had apple pie a la mode. It was so good, you guys. I went upstairs like um, when I was watching it and Alex was like just falling asleep. And I was like, um, so it must have been earlier when I watched that because I went up there afterwards and I was like, oh my God, I just had this apple pie a la mode and it was so good. He just started laughing. He was like, you're so funny. But anyway, um, so yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do for dinner yet tonight. I asked Alex, if, I was like, what did you have for lunch? And he was like a protein shake. And I was like, are you going to have anything for dinner? And he was like, yeah, I've got stuff in the, the freezer that I'm going to make. He'll probably make like pizzas or mozzarella sticks or something like that. So maybe we'll watch some of the Real Housewives or... I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. It's kind of crazy. It's the last day of July. Summer has seemed to kind of last. I feel like it was just like yesterday, though, that I was talking about, like, I can't wait till summer. I can't wait till the pool opens and all that kind of stuff. And now we're, like, all the way, like, two-thirds of the way through summer, you know? It does seem kind of crazy to me a little bit. But it, like I said, I don't know. It doesn't like, it doesn't feel like it was yesterday that it started, you know? I mean, I feel like I've really enjoyed summer a lot so far. And like sitting out here and watching my shows and talking to my neighbors. And, you know, the thing is, is that <clears throat> even when the pool closes, <clears throat> Indiana is still pretty comfortably warm until like the middle or the end of October. I mean, we've had some Halloweens where it snowed. Okay, the tripod sort of sliding down. Um, anyway, I was saying about the weather that, you know, we still have September and October typically where it's really kind of nice. <clears throat> so I still have August, September, and October to be able to sit out here and watch shows. Even if it gets kind of cool at night, I'll just put on my coat. Um, last night there was a cool breeze. 
So I actually did put on my coat last night. I have my heated vest and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. I've still got a lot of time to still enjoy out here and stuff like that. I was telling Alex, I was like, we have not used the back patio at all. Which is funny because I bought these two big, huge plants out there. But, like, they have, like, palm trees and, like, all these flowers. And I don't water them very often. Like, I, to be honest with you, I kind of forget sometimes. And, um... They're still like growing and doing so fantastic. So they must just be doing good from like the rain that we've had and stuff like that. Cause I haven't remembered to water them um, regularly. I mean, I do, but not very often, but they're still doing really, really well. So. I still have the rest of my strawberry rhubarb pie. So tonight, I may sit out here and make a cup of herb tea. Oh, I found this coffee that I forgot I had. It was honey blueberry. And so, well, I ran out of um, iced coffee. <laughs> this is kind of funny. You guys will think this is kind of cute, but it, maybe, I don't know. Um, some of you will. But I ran out of iced coffee. Alex was, and I told Alex, I said, oh my God, I ran out of iced coffee. He was like, well, why didn't you have me run to the store, babe? And I was like, I just completely forgot about it. And I, you know, whatever. And I, you know, was doing other stuff, and this was yesterday. And so I said, but I'll just make some, you know, whatever I was. So I was like, I'm going to make a pot of coffee. I haven't made a pot of coffee in a long time. And so I made a pot of coffee. Actually, here's the very bottom of my iced coffee. So I made a pot of coffee um, that was like this organic blend from this local coffee shop that I really like here in Indianapolis. I got this coffee a long time ago. Ground the beans, made the pot of coffee. And I actually, like, pulled it out before it was done. And so um, it kept on dripping, and I was, like, making a mess. And I was like, this is not worth it, and all this kind of stuff. I actually just put the whole pot right in the refrigerator when it was done. And so this morning, I had iced coffee, like, you know, that I, like, brewed the night before. Mel, my book club partner, she makes her own cold, own cold brew and stuff like that. I need to probably ask her how she does it. But last night... I made a cup of this, um, what do you call it, uh, honey blueberry, I forgot, I think it was, um, it's like the brand of some grocery store or something, it might have just even been like Target or something like that, I can't remember, um, I don't know what the brand is, but it's really, really good, and I had forgotten I had them, because I was looking, well, what, I was looking for coffee filters until I realized that this coffee maker that Caroline got us, like, years ago doesn't take a filter, like, it has, like, a plastic bag filter, you don't have to put a filter in it, you just wash it out, and so, I was looking for coffee filters, and, um, they were, like, in the corner cabinet that we have, and so when I was down there, I found, found this box of this blueberry honey or honey blueberry coffee. And I was like, oh, that sounds really good. So I made a cup of it in the Keurig and then I put it in my white cup and then I put the white cup in the freezer. And um, that was like earlier. That was like right when we got home because I was like, I didn't drink all of it. So I was like, I don't want to be up super, super late. And I've been drinking lemonade early. That was like literally like the only bit of caffeine that I had in like hours. And, um, but I put it in the freezer and so then I have like this like honey blueberry iced coffee. I was going to put it in that cup that somebody got me, um, but I just put it in the freezer instead, but it was really, really good. Like I said, I didn't drink the whole thing. I just had it, um, while I was watching one of the shows and then I switched to water. But anyway, um, yeah. So I made a pot of coffee, and then I, when the, cof the pot of coffee was done, I cleaned out the whole thing. It was like, I was like, this is not worth it. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but this is not worth it. And I put the whole pot in the freezer. I mean, it was fine. It tasted, you know, very similar to, like, buying the iced coffee because it was just a pot of coffee. It tasted very similar to that. And I just put it on ice and put it in this cup today, and that was my iced coffee. Um, but I do kind of miss the blonde rose from Starbucks, so... When Caroline comes and gets me on Wednesday, we'll go to the store and I'll get a couple more of those to last me throughout the week. And, um, cause I don't have any of those now, but I still do have that. I have like half the pot of coffee so I can use it tomorrow. And, um, there's my neighbor that went to dinner with us yesterday. He's out there looking at all of his plants and stuff. So I don't know, t tonight maybe I'll have my strawberry rhubarb pie and listen to some of my audiobook. Um, Low Country Boil, which I really like. I really like it as a cozy mystery. I actually 
So I already announced the book for August for Peter's Book Club, but somebody brought to my attention um, a new author that put out the first book in a new Cozy series, Cozy Mystery series. And the book, I think, is already out. Um, and I, but I like, I don't, I think it's already out. Hold on a second. Let me look. Um, it said that it's already out. But I, hold on a second. I'm going to see on Audible or on Amazon if you can buy it. Hold on a second. Who is the author of this? I don't want to say anything about it because I want it to be a surprise. Um, when I pick it. But it only had four ratings on it. Hold on a second. It only had four ratings on it. On, um... Why is it not? Why is it not pulling it up? Because I'm spelling the last name wrong. But it only had four ratings on, um... Here it is. Amazon. Well, it's available on Kindle and it's available on paperback. So, it must already be available. But it's not available on Audible. Which kind of surprises me. So, see all formats. I looked on Audible and it wasn't there. Now, it's only on Kindle and paperback. So, maybe it's coming to, to Audible. I don't know. But, um, I really want to start this. I can read the paperback if I have to, obviously. <laughs> Now my neighbor's wife is outside in her little cute like house dress. I make it sound like she's like 85. She's like 60. She looks real cute though. It's like a lime green little summer house dress. Oh, he's watering all the hostas out in front. She was talking to him. Um, so I think I have like two or three books that I might pick for September's book for Peter's Book Club. I'm like so into the cozy mysteries right now. <clears throat> I have a bunch of books that I want to read that aren't Cozy Mysteries, but I'm like really like listening to Low Country Boil made me realize like how much I miss the Cozy Mysteries. Um, cozy Mysteries are just a really good way for me to get back like into like the reading and like getting out of a reading slump and stuff like that because I love them and they're easy reads and they're just fun to listen to. And there's something that's just so homey and comforting about them. I don't know what it is, but you're also like, they're intriguing enough to be like a mystery kind of thriller, you know, but with the cozy, homey aspect of, you know, of the writing and the characters and the food and the stories. So, yeah, um... <clears throat> She's laughing about something. Hello? Hello? Are you Do you want me to turn it off? No, no. Oh. <laughs> She's like, are you filming? <laughs> yeah. Um. But anyway, uh, so yeah. So in the end of my, um, my video that I did on my Peter Mon channel, which was like a rant video, kind of, but I talked about some other stuff on there as well. Um, somebody asked me, they said, what is, so I, I put up on Instagram, I said like, like what are your rants and complaints? Cause I was gonna pick from them and like, and comment on them. I said, I think I said that on there. I don't remember what I said, but anyway, I put on my Instagram, I said, hold on just a second. I said, I think I might need a good old rant video to end July. Let me know what you guys are ranting and complaining about and I'll let you know my thoughts. And so somebody said, like, what are Boo Radley's complaints? And so I said something else in there about one of his complaints, but I said his number one complaint was that people always spell or mispronounce his name. <laughs> Which is actually really funny to me, and I know that there are not not everybody out there has read the book 
To Kill a Mockingbird, I get it, or seen the movie, or re watched the play, or anything like that. I just feel like Boo Radley is such an enigmatic, is the word I'm looking for, character, profound character, that it kind of cracks me up that people, like, I mean, even in the movie Benny and June years ago, like, she comes down the stairs, and, um... And he's like staring at her and she's, she says, are you having a Boo Radley moment? Because he's like shocked to see her, you know. And so like, I feel like, you know, and somebody said to me the other day, did you know that there was a band called the Boo Radleys? Yes, I did. And all this kind of stuff. So, and I don't know anything about that band, but. Um, I mean, there's been a lot of, like, uh, pop culture references to the character Boo Radley and things like that. And, um, and it was, I think it was actually Robert Duvall, who's, like, a super famous actor. I think it was his first role ever in a movie, but I could be wrong about that. Um, so, but people always, like, when they, like, in the vlog comment, and you guys, like, I am not offended by this. I think it's cute, honestly. Okay, I was joking in my rant video, but I did go and explain about why I picked the name for him and things like that. So if you want to hear that. But people will say, like, Bo Ridley, <laughs> or Boo Ridley, or, the, I mean, people spell his name so many different ways, it's so cute, and it's so funny, and, like, no, I don't take offense to it at all, and neither does Boo Ridley, <laughs> Boo Ridley, I almost called, no, n neither does Boo Radley, we think it's cute. So, anyway, but I was reading this book, like, parts of this book, and I forgot, like, oh my god, like, this book just, like, meant so much to me when I was growing up. I mean, it's so weathered and used, and I have so many parts in here that are underlined, like, um, the beginning of the book, well, it's actually not on, page nine is where in the movie it starts. So, my friend, her, um... My neighbor, her friend was telling me at the pool the other day, we were talking about it. I can't even remember how we started talking about it. But she said, I said something about it, like, being, we were talking about, like, banning books and stuff like that. And, like, the ridiculousness of some books that are being banned and all this kind of stuff. And she was referencing this book. And I said, it's really sad because I learned some great life lessons from this book and movie. Like, I really did, you know, of how to be a kinder person and, you know, about... I think it was my mom's entry of teaching me about racial injustice. I actually said in my video, because my mom's friend gave this to me in 1986, and I said I was born in, um, this is my bad skills in math, which I'm sure somebody will comment on in my video. So she gave it to me in 1986, which I was born in 1972, and I said that makes, that means I would have been 12 going into 7th grade. No, I would have been 14. Um, but I think this was my first, but I think I read it in 7th grade, but anyway... On page nine is where at the bottom here is actually the beginning of the movie, and it says Macon was a tired was an old Macon was an old town, but it was a tired old town when I first knew it. In rainy weather, the streets turned to red slop. Grass grew on the sidewalks. The courthouse sagged in the square. Somehow it was hotter then. A black dog suffered on a summer's day. Bony mules hitched to Hoover carts flicked flies in the sweltering shade of the live oaks in the square. Men's stiff collars wilted by nine in the morning. Ladies bathed before noon after the three o'clock naps and by nightfall were like soft tea cakes with fr frostings of sweat and sweet talcum. I can still hear Mary Batum like reading it or whoever wrote it, read it in the movie. I can still hear her reading it. But I love so many, much of this book. And, um... It just, it's just, there's so many things about this book that are just fantastic. I mean, just... There's my neighbor, walking his dog. Scout takes, uh, Ar Mr. Arthur Boo Radley in to say goodnight to Jim. What does she say to him here? She says, you can pet him, Mr. Arthur. He's asleep. You couldn't if he was awake, though. He wouldn't let you. I found myself explaining. Go ahead. I don't know why this brings me to tears. Boo's hand hovered over Jim's head. Go on, sir. He's asleep. His, head came, his hand came down lightly on Jim's hair. I led him to the front porch where his uneasy steps halted. 
He was still holding my hand and he gave no sign of letting me go. Will you take me home? He almost whispered it in the voice of a child afraid of the dark. I put my, fo I put my foot on the top step and stopped. I would lead him through our house, but I would never lead him, lead him home. Mr. Arthur, bend your arm down here like that. That's right, sir. I slipped my hand into the crook of his arm. He had to stoop a little to accommodate me, but if Miss Stephanie Crawford was watching from her upstairs window, she would see Arthur Radley escorting me down the sidewalk, as any gentleman would do. Neighbors bring food with death and flowers with sickness and little things in between. Boo was our neighbor. He gave us two soap dolls, a broken watch and chain, a pair of good luck pennies, and our lives. But neighbors give in return. We never put any we never put back into that tree what we took out of it. We had given him nothing and it made me sad. I turned to go home, street lights linked down the street all the way to town. I had never seen our neighborhood from this angle. There was Miss Maudie's, Miss Stephanie's, there was our house. I could see the porch swing. Miss Rachel's house was beyond us, plainly visible. I could even see Miss DuBose. Miss DuBose. I looked behind me. To the left of the brown door was a long shuttered window. I walked to it, stood in front of it, and turned around. In daylight, I thought. You could see to the post office corner. Daylight. In my mind, the sight faded. It was daytime and the neighborhood was busy. Miss Stephanie Crawford crossed the street. It goes on to say all this kind of stuff. She goes on to talk about to Atticus. He guided me to the bed and sat me down. He lifted me up and put me under the cover. His hands were under my chin, pulling up the cover, tucking it around me. Because she says, Atticus, he was, real, he was real nice. Most people are, Scout, when you finally see them. He turned out the light and went into Jim's room. He would be there all night. And he would be there when Jim waked up in the morning. Most people are, Scout, when you finally see them. I think I try so hard to see the kindness in people, you know, and the humanity in people, and try to see. I really do. I know some people don't think that, but I really do try to see through, you know, the ugliness and things. And, and I think this book has taught me so much of that that you don't truly understand a person until you walk around in their front porch in their shoes for a while, you know. I love this book so much. And anyway, my neighbor's friend was telling me at the pool the other day when we were talking about it. She said, did you ever see the interview? And I, I didn't look it up because I wanted to. With Oprah, when Oprah interviewed Harper Lee, I think it was like Harper Lee's very, who wrote the book. Nell Harper Lee, when she, um, it was like her last interview that she ever did, I think. And she was telling me, she said, I said, no, I didn't see the interview. And she said, Oprah asks her in there, hey. What is this guy? I have never seen this guy before in my neighborhood before, this older guy. And he like stopped like he was gonna come in and then he saw the camera, so he stopped. He kept already stopped and then he kept on walking. So he obviously didn't want to say anything to me while I was filming, but um Apparently Oprah asks her in the interview, you, you only wrote one book. Like, why did you not write any more books? And Harper Lee said to her, I said everything I had to say. I think that's so beautiful, you know? I don't know much, but I'll say this. When I look back on my life and I think about, when we talk about books and movies and songs and things like that, you know, I think about like the song Both Sides Now all the versions from Judy Collins to Joni Mitchell to the Coda. I love the Coda version and the movie Coda to the movie Coda itself. I love, you know, to the way we were to, to kill a mockingbird to out of Africa 
to all of these books and movies and TV shows that were so implemental in my life and we want to minimize literature and pop culture and television and movies. Some of the greatest lessons I've learned in my, my, my life came from those, you know? There's Lassie. I know it probably seems like I'm sad. I'm like deep in thought. I'm not sad at all. I feel very blessed, you know, to be introduced to those things in my life and to, um, like when I say to somebody, like, did you ever see the movie To Kill a Mockingbird? I actually love the movie more than the book, which I've said a million times, but and they'll say, no, I've never seen it. I'm always kind of like shocked, you know? But I'm not shocked, like passing judgment. I'm shocked because I learned so many great lessons from that book or that movie, you know? The book too, but the movie t takes a lot out. There's like, the movie stays just in the story of like the kids, Boo Radley and the trial. I learned so many lessons about so many lo things in life and how to treat people and how to interact pe with people, you know, and... So many songs, too, you know, like Bob Dylan songs back in the day and... Peter, Paul, and Mary, you know, like, if I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning, I'd a hammer in the evening. All over this land. My mom loved folk music. My mom loved music that had a purpose, you know? But if she got older, she would say, like, some of the music that she used to listen to in her youth made her sad, like a lot of Bob Dylan music and Judy Collins and stuff like that. Some of that music made her sad because I think it reminded her of a certain period of her life, and that was when she started listening to a lot of Janet Jackson and reggae music, and she loved, like, the band Garbage with Shirley Manson and... She loved, like, dance music and stuff like that, because I think it, like, brightened her spirit. You know, I get that a little bit. Um, I remember, like, reading She's Come Undone by Wally Lamb years ago, like, I don't know, a couple years after it came out or the year it came out or something, like, when I was in my early 20s, and I can remember it, like, being, having such a profound effect on me. And then we read it for the book club before the book club was a true crime book club the year before that we just read like pop culture books and things like that and so that was one of the books that I picked I think that was during that time or maybe I just I don't know I think it was for that the book club that I read it or maybe it was just a different time I don't know but I, when I reread it it, it 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 had a different effect on me it had this effect of like it talked a lot about grief and I didn't necessarily remember that at that time because I hadn't experienced so much of that. But I, and this is two, three, four years ago, like I, at that point in my life, I'd experienced so much grief. And so the book spoke to me in a different way, you know? And I think books and movies and songs, you know, it's like both sides now. That song was so inspirational to me when I was a kid, you know? Um, Crosby, Stills, Nash music, you know? The older I've gotten, you know, like, has a different meaning to me and things like that, you know? Bob Dylan music, Judy Collins music, that used to be so inspirational and motivational to me, it does kind of, some of it, make me sad today, you know? Being older, being 51, I was 20, I was in high school, you know, 15, 16, younger than that when I started listening to it, because my mom listened to all that stuff, my dad listened to a lot of that stuff, you know? And so today, it's like a lot of that music, like I look back on my life, like with both sides now, like I always remember like for so much of my life, the parts about the clouds and love, you know, and I don't know clouds at all. I don't really know love at all. But now when I listen to it, I listen to the lyrics mostly about life, you know, that old friends say I'm acting strange. They say I've changed. I can't remember the exact lyrics. No friends say I'm acting strange. They shake their heads. They say I've changed. 
Well, something's lost and something's gained in living every day. I think the truisms of the things that back in the day were inspirational or motivational to me as I've gotten older, what I realize is that it's true. You know, I've had friends that look at me and say things like that. You know, I talked about setting healthy boundaries and limits. I've had people look at me and say, you've changed, you're different, you know? In some ways I have and in some ways I haven't. I love that song so much. This is kind of a sad vlog, isn't it? I need to get off here. I said it wasn't sad. I'm like deep in thought. Like, I, I just, I feel so blessed, you know? And I think reading this earlier, not in this vlog, but when I did my video, but also in reading it here, like, it just makes me think about like all the things, the life lessons I've learned, you know? Like, I can remember my dad when he did house calls when I was a kid, before we would go to somebody's house. You know, my dad would, would be after church on a Sunday and my dad would say, we're just going to be at, there for like a half an hour. We're going to go in and I'm going to change this guy's dressing on his hand and whatever, you know, and before we go in there, make sure that you call him, you know, say yes or no, sir, or Mr. or Mrs. and be very polite. And, you know, this man, like he hurt his hand, you know, because he works in a mill or a factory or whatever mill factory and. I don't even know that I really understood it. And he'd say, you know, he's having a hard time providing for his family right now. So this is a hard time for him and <clears throat> be very respectful. And I can remember we would go to these people's houses and these people were so nice, you know, and my dad be down on his knees as the guy like was sitting in a chair. My dad did a lot of house calls back in the day. And, you know, he would be like changing this guy's dressing and, um, and I'd just be sitting there, you know, my little tie from church and whatever. And then the wife would say, you know, Dr. Mom, we would love for you to stay. And, um, my dad didn't charge for house calls. He just did that, you know? And they'd say, oh, we'd love for you to stay. I mean, I think to some degree it kind of does remind me of how Atticus is in the movie To Kill a Mockingbird. And my dad, you know, the wife would say, we, we'd love for you to stay for dinner, you know? Would you like to stay for dinner? And my dad would have just said, you know, half an hour before that, we're just going to stay for 20 or 30 minutes. You guys have to stay this change his dressing and then we're going to go. My dad would say, oh, absolutely, we would love to stay, you know. And we would have dinner with some random family that I didn't really know. And, you know, my dad would say, these potatoes are really good. Aren't they really good, Peter? Oh, yes, they're really good. Thank you, you know, Mrs. So-and-so for this food. It's wonderful. And, you know, my dad really taught me all of that. And it was interesting because, so, when I um, uh, was applying to graduate school for get my master's degree in social work, you had to write like this 25 page essay and about all these life experiences and all this kind of stuff. And one of the, one of the questions was, who was like a social worker or social service person that was like a role model to you of how to treat people as you were growing up? And I used my dad as an example. I used that as a specific example. And that, you know, talking about that, nobody's any different than us and you and you treat people with kindness and love compassion and understanding and I, I think about that you know and all these great lessons that my parents taught me and not to say that like you know like my mom like I mean even my dad like it wasn't to say that I didn't have difficult times with them growing up you know like my mom and she was a very heavy drinker, you know, and she had, she was in her own active addiction, but that doesn't take away from the numerous amounts of times that she didn't drink and was, you know, a fantastic mother and taught me things and had really fun moments. And, um, and, and I'm so grateful that she got sober because I think that those years together allowed me to forgive her and you know remove any kind of resentment that I had I think had she died drinking I think I would have remembered the negative times but I don't I remember a lot of the positive times I'm not gonna say I don't ever remember the negative times because there were a lot of times is this about to end I can't tell oh it is about to end here in about five seconds Did I really, have I really been vlogging for like a half an hour I said I was going to do like a shorter vlog tonight, but I guess I didn't. But anyway, I got to get inside. It's eight. It's almost, uh, yeah. So, um, it's not almost eight. It's past eight thirty. But anyway, um, 
I think because my mom got sober and I was able to see a different person and we were able to develop a different relationship and I was able to be the child and she was able to be the parent. Um, and I no longer had to like really like take care of her like the way that I did when I was like in high school and things like that. I think I was able to look back that with that with fondness versus friends of mine that I know that have parents that died in active addiction and they still to this day have a lot of anger and resentment, you know, but my mom gave me that gift and and I say this a lot and I really believe it. Like other than my life, the greatest gift my mom ever gave me was her sobriety and I really believe that. I mean, our relationship completely changed. Those years that I had, those 12 plus years that I had with my mom, 12 years and 11 months after she got sober were some of the greatest times that we ever had in our entire life. We had such deep, meaningful conversations and I didn't worry about her. I mean, I worried about her, you know, but like I didn't worry about like, am I going to get a call that she's dead because she fell and hit her head drinking, you know? You know, those were the things I was worried about when I was a kid. Um, I didn't worry about that kind of stuff, you know? Like, is she going to burn the house down because she passes out and she's smoking a cigarette or something. I, mean, I didn't worry about those things. I didn't worry about, you know, like, is she going to pass out and not wake up? Is she going to, you know, is something horrible going to happen to her while she's drinking? Like, I, I worried a lot about that when I was a kid. It was a huge fear of mine, but I didn't have to have that anymore. And we were able to develop a completely new relationship, and I'm so grateful for that, you know? And I think it allows me to shine a light on in my memory on those positive moments and not always stay stuck on those negative moments. But some of those negative moments are things that I, I greatly learned from too, you know? And my sponsors have in my life have really allowed me to, you know, forgive my mom and look at those things and say, like, she was a sick person. And that has in turn allowed me to see people that maybe I don't, not that are just alcoholics and addicts, but people that I don't necessarily, you know, get along with or whatever and see that maybe that they're sick people, you know, and, and, and have compassion for them and understand them, you know, and, and pray for them and, um, you know, want the best for them. I think one of the hardest concepts I've ever learned in recovery was to truly forgive somebody and understand somebody, you have to want for them what you want for yourself as a human being, you know? And there have been times in my life where like I like really had issues with people, like I mean, long before I ever got, you know, on YouTube and stuff, where like I really struggled with that and I thought, okay, but like they're a human being too, having, you know, this experience and I, I, I have to learn to love them and, and forgiving isn't forgetting, you know, it's not forgetting what they did. I don't have to continue to allow it, but if I can want for them what I want for myself, then I can see them as a human being. It's one of the things I'm trying to do right now with the people that have really like made my life miserable the last couple of years. And I don't want to get into a lot about it, but like personally that's what I'm working on is trying to find compassion and understanding and like if I have hatred in my heart or anger or resentment or whatever, you know, I said in my video today earlier that like don't you ever just want to get revenge on somebody? Like I mean I think that's like human response. But if I have misery in my heart, like that takes more of a toll on me than it does on anybody else. You know, it's people written space in my head for free. And so I don't want that, you know? And I think people sometimes misunderstand that, that it's like if you try to forgive somebody or understand or have compassion or kindness for somebody, it's like, okay, well, you're forgetting what they did. No, I'm not forgetting what they did. I don't want to live with hatred in my heart. I don't want to live with that anger and misery and resentment in my heart. So I have to work that way to see them as human beings that might be sick people that might not have the capability to love and be kind and... And, and hopefully, maybe I can show them that grace. Not forgetting. That doesn't mean that you don't take action. That doesn't mean that you don't follow through. But that you can show people grace and still do that. At the same time, you know, and that maybe one of those people out there will be like, wow, so like Peter showed me some grace. So maybe I can show Peter some grace too. Or maybe I can show other people in my life some grace too.
or maybe it's somebody out there that hears this is going through something really difficult in their life and they're finding it so hard to find any love or compassion in their heart for somebody that's putting them through hell, you know? But really, to be honest with you, the answer to forgiveness and health of ourselves is to remove that anger and resentment from our heart. And the only way to do that is to see people that we don't necessarily love or see eye to eye with compassion. It doesn't mean I have to love that person. It doesn't mean I have to be best friends with that person. It doesn't mean I have to ever interact with them. It doesn't mean I have to follow, not follow through with things. It doesn't mean that I don't pursue things behind the scenes. It doesn't mean that I have to forget what happened. It doesn't mean that I have to let it go. It means that in my heart, I don't want to hold on to that anger because it's not healthy for me, you know? Anyway, this is going on long enough. All right, you guys, I'm going to get off here. Um, I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Monday and a fantastic beginning to your week and a magically amazing beginning to your week. And if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And remember these three very important things. One, you can start your day over whenever you want. Two, practice random acts of kindness, but shh, don't tell anyone. And three, most importantly, these are the things I always say. And three, most importantly, make sure that you reach out to somebody and let them know how much I mean to you. Like I always say, you might be putting a smile on their face. You might be changing their day for the better. You might be making them feel no, not so all alone. And you might be cheering them up. You don't know. And also, be kinder to one another. Love one another um, a little bit more. And most importantly, be kinder and love yourselves a little be kinder to one another, love one another a little bit more, and most importantly, be kinder and love yourselves a little bit more. Because why? It all starts with you. And I love you guys so much, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. And tomorrow's the first day of August, so get ready. And I love you guys so much. Bye. Love you. Oh, and for those that want to hear it, and those that need to hear it, and those that just happen to stick around, one more I love you. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love you. Happy birthday, Lena.